Tonight we begin with a live look at our air quality right now. Currently, as you can see, we are sitting right here in the middle of all that red in the unhealthy category. Now, at times today, we did dip into the very unhealthy category, and we are expecting to hit that again tomorrow and continue to look out for that into this weekend. Good evening, by the way. Thank you for joining us here tonight on Crimpton News at 11. I'm Joshua Robinson. And with that smoke continuing to linger, we are also expecting to hit possible triple digit temperatures this weekend. Meteorologist Michelle Boss joining us now from the Outdoor Weather Center. Michelle, this smoke could offer a little bit by way of reducing that heat though, right? Yeah, so it was kind of a, an interesting trade off a smoke blanketing, of course, the entire inland northwest and we were expecting highs in the upper 90s and low 100s today, but the smoke was so thick it actually held our temperatures down a bit. Still plenty hot though. Here's a look at the area highs today. 93 in Spokane, lower 90s in Deer Park, only in the upper 80s in Sandpoint where we expected uh, some of those low 100s, especially out in central Washington, 97 in Moses Lake, 97 in the Tri Cities and just under 100 degrees in OMAC. Currently temperatures, of course, are a little bit more comfortable. 60s and 70s from Sandpoint down into Spokane, upper 70s in Moses Lake, and just under 80 degrees now in Lewiston. But we do expect it to continue to be hot over the weekend. In fact, the excessive heat warning has been expanded to uh, continue into Sunday now at 8 o'clock. That does include portions of North Idaho down into the Idaho Palouse and Coeur d'Alene with highs again in the upper 90s to low 100s. We're expecting a little bit more wind, occasionally breezy conditions Saturday and Sunday. So now we also have a red flag warning on Saturday for the areas shaded in pink across central Washington. Sunday, additional winds could uh, create more red flag warnings. So we've got fire weather watches now for much of eastern Washington for Sunday as well. Of course, very dry conditions all across the region. Hardly a cloud in the sky, but uh, infrared satellite doesn't pick up the smoke and haze. Of course, we've got plenty of that. The next three days are going to be hot 99 on Saturday, hot and hazing 98 on Sunday, and a little bit of relief by Monday. Hopefully a little bit cleaner air highs in the upper 80s. And of course, all of that smoke is coming from wildfires burning across our region. We're going to get right to the latest information from those fires, beginning with the Trestle Creek fire that's burning near Hope, Idaho, and has burned now more than 4,000 acres. Level 1 and 2 evacuations are in place for nearby resident, residents, and right now, crews do expect to get the fire fully contained by October 15th. The Walker Creek Spur and Chickadee fires burning in Okanagan County are now prompting level three and two evacuations. Collectively, all three fires are burning more than 12,000 acres. The Walker Creek fire is 10% contained. The Chickadee is 40% contained, but the Spur fire, which is the largest of the three, is 0% contained. The Bedrock fire burning in Nez Perce County is now burned more than 8,000 acres. Level one, two, and three evacuations are in place across Lenore. Now, just this morning, FEMA authorized the use of federal funds to help with the Bedrock fire. It is 0% contained, but over 250 people are currently working on that fire. And there are several other wildfires we couldn't mention in our newscast tonight, but we do have an easy way for you to get even more information. Just text the word FIRE to 509-448-2000. We'll get you the links with more information information on wildfires in your area right to your phone. And new tonight at 11, hundreds of deaths and thousands of COVID cases can be linked to a threat we're facing right now in the in the Northwest wildfires. A new study points to that growing link between COVID-19 death rates and wildfire smoke. So tonight we had Krem 2's medical expert weigh in on just how serious the problem is. We've never found ourselves in this situation before in the midst of a global pandemic and raging wildfires really culminating together. A new study published in National Geographic reports that wildfires from last year may have caused more than 19,000 COVID-19 cases and more than 700 deaths. Crimtu's medical expert Dr. Pyle Coley says evidence of this link continues to grow throughout the medical community. You're actually more likely to catch COVID if you live in an area with a lot of wildfire activity. It increases the inflammation in the lungs because it reduces the immunity because the lungs are so busy fighting the particulate matters that they're not as good at fighting COVID. Continued exposure to wildfire smoke has proven to increase the likelihood of asthma, COPD, or other respiratory issues, which can distract your body from fighting off the COVID-19 virus. Along with wearing an N95 strength mask, Dr. Coley says people subjected to constant wildfire smoke need to be aware of their dosage or how much smoke they're directly inhaling. Small doses, even if they're prolonged, may not contribute to those long-term effects because the duration is limited. But when you're talking about lifetime exposure year after year after year, 
you start to cause a lot of chronic inflammation, not just in your lungs, in your eyes, in your nose and throat, in your skin, all of your mucous membranes, as we like to call them, which can really result in long-term effects. And in fact, it's estimated that millions of people die every year just as a result of wildfire smoke. Now, Dr. Coley says even though she is a cardiologist and always advocates for more exercise, she recommends we do not exercise outside when the air quality is this bad because those bigger breaths and the added stress on your body could have some lasting impacts on your life years down the road. And a lot happened in vaccine news today, so here are three things you need to know. A CDC panel has recommended an extra dose of one of the COVID-19 vaccines for immunocompromised people. The recommendation comes as the FDA gave emergency use authorization last night for a third booster shot. The recommendation only goes for people who got the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. The FDA says there isn't enough data right now to discuss the possibility of an extra dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. They need to understand the consequences of a variant like Delta impacting us as it is clearly doing in parts of the country with devastating impacts. We will have to shut down schools. State Superintendent Chris Rakedahl is asking the governor to add teachers to the list of employees in the state who must get a vaccine. Rakedahl says it's the only way schools can open normally, and he's interested in getting those vaccinated who have skipped a shot by choice. But Rakedahl says he wants to limit the exemptions to only medical or religious based. And a disturbing trend across Washington tonight is almost every Washington County has seen a rise in COVID cases more than 100%. Only seven counties have seen cases increase by less than 100%. Meanwhile, Spokane, along with nine other counties, have had an increase of cases that is between the 300 and almost 600% range. And six counties, including Ponderé and Lincoln, have seen an increase in cases by 600% or more. Now, the DOH estimates one out of 172 Washingtonians have COVID. Our other top stories tonight, the accused Freeman High School shooter had his plea deal denied in court this morning. Caleb Sharp's defense team filed a motion to change his plea to not guilty by reason of insanity. Judge Michael Price denied that plea and called it a highly unusual motion, saying he hasn't seen this kind of plea in his 18 years on the bench. He also said it's one of the slowest cases he's ever seen. The prosecution even went on to say the defense did not follow the law correctly to make their plea. Sharp is facing multiple charges, including first degree premeditated murder for killing one student and injuring several others at Freeman High School four years ago. His trial is set for January 18th of 2022. A candlelight vigil for a 19 month old girl whose life was cut short will be held tomorrow. A doctor working with investigators say Azalea died after suffering severe injuries indicative of child abuse. Her mother's boyfriend was looking after the toddler at the time and he's now in jail charged with assault. But those charges could be upgraded. Azalea's vigil will be at 7 p.m. at Mirabeau Park and Mirabeau Point Park rather. And coming up later in our show, we have new search warrants detailing what led up to the toddler's death. Looking down to the southern state, Oregon Governor Kate Brown is deploying up to 1,500 National Guard members to support hospitals as COVID cases soar. It's part of an effort to help frontline workers deal with the increasing number of COVID hospitalizations and cases as the Delta variant spreads. As of right now, there is a record 733 COVID patients hospitalized in Oregon and 185 are in intensive care units. Well, the Spokane Shock wrapped up their last regular game season, a regular season game tonight against an old foe falling to the Arizona Rattlers in a rivalry renewed today. Brenna Green has more on how tonight's game clouds up their playoff hopes. The Spokane Shock were just not able to overcome the Arizona Rattlers and their lead tonight. At one point, the Shock cut it to just a three point Arizona lead, but Arizona responded, scored a touchdown that made it 30 to 20 and Spokane struggled scoring after that. The touchdown came from Drew Powell, who had four Arizona Rattler touchdowns tonight. Three of them were rushing. The quarterback was just on fire. He could very well be the league's MVP this year, and Spokane just didn't have an answer for him. Of course, like I mentioned, Spokane struggled moving the ball. Coach Billy back very, very honest about how he felt after tonight's game. Uh, we've had, what, four, uh, 13 turnovers in, uh, in three games? Pretty bad. You can win games doing that. 
So we're, we're going to make a change in quarterback. And it's uh, hopefully Blake and Chuck are back in two weeks. If not, then we'll have uh, hopefully Joe Montana or somebody comes in here and plays for us. Spokane finishes the season six and six. They now wait to see what their playoff fate is. The majority of the league playing next week. Spokane isn't playing because their final game of the season was supposed to be against the Louisville Extreme, but Louisville got kicked out of the league midway through the year. So Spokane just has to wait at home, see how this all shakes out. Of course, if they're able to hold the fourth seed, which they came into tonight with, they would host a playoff game. However, if they drop below that, they will be on the road in two weeks. Reporting at the Spokane Arena, I'm Brenna Green, Curb 2 Sports. Still coming up tonight, a popular country music festival is now linked to a multi-county COVID outbreak. Now it's putting people who weren't even there at risk of getting sick. Plus, later new unsealed research warrants have given us a better idea of what led up to the death of a Spokane Valley toddler.